he did some speaking yesterday about one of the key positions on the team that we thought one or two of their first round picks would be devoted to in order to improve it, to go get a franchise guy. Because two years ago this month, the whole Matthew Stafford for Jared Goff trade was about getting Stafford to a new place because the Rams had been perennially, or the Lions, excuse me, had been perennially bad. And part of the deal was to get a sweetener, to get an enhancement, to get an extra first-round pick for the Lions. Please take our trash. And I don't mean that in a pejorative sense, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. And the Lions took Jared Goff under the assumption by everyone, I assume including them, that this was a short-term thing. This was a Brock Osweiler hot potato deal. We got to get this contract off our books. We never should have given it to him. Here's a first round pick. Please take him. And now two years in, Jared Goff's the guy. That's a hell of a windup for me to throw to the Brad Holmes sound talking about the guy who was their quarterback the past two years and will be the quarterback moving forward, Jared Goff. Here's Brad Holmes. I think it's a lot easier to get worse at quarterback uh, than to get better at quarterback and so I, 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 in, in this league. And so I think what Jared has done this year, um, you know, he captained the ship of a, you know, top three offense. And I want to say he was top 10 statistically in most of the passing categories. So, and again, you know how, how we approach the draft, like we're never going to turn down a good football player. So this is a football player we really love. I mean, we're going to make sure every stone is unturned. But um, but I do think that Jared has proven everybody that he is a starting quarterback for us. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny, too. When, when Brad Holmes got that job a couple of years ago, he, he didn't have the, the – the, he's got kind of a look now. He's got the build now of, like, Dan Campbell. It's like Dan Campbell was getting everybody to go to the gym and lift weights and get get yoked. And uh, he, he doesn't he seem like 30 pounds heavier? Not in a bad way. He, he just seems he seems like he's he's jacked. He's like, like he and Dan Campbell are having bench press competition. It's like he, he grew into a big, burly, strong man all of a sudden somehow. Just like dre- eating protein shakes up there with Dan Campbell. Getting in a few gun sessions there. Curls and triceps. But no doubt. He's got like uh, a little more of the most interesting man in the world type of colors in his beard going on and then a little yeah it looks like he's got a little you know arms there he's got something going so I I noticed it right away when I saw it too I was like damn he he does look a little different as compared to when he first got the job but but hey he should be feeling good hopefully his body's feeling good he's done a lot of great things like you talked about I mean really when you look at their roster uh you look at the offensive side of the ball you know, with him starting with the drafting of Penny Sewell at right tackle, well, that's where it starts with the Lions. That's where it starts with the success of Jared Goff and everybody. Their own line can be overpowering. The receivers are awesome. And then we haven't even seen Jamison Williams really at 100% yet. The running backs are damn good. I mean, both of them, Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift. They got tight ends, even though they traded Hawkinson away. They got two tight ends they like. That's why they traded them. Now it can all go to the defensive side of the ball. And I don't know, Mike, what do you think? I, I like the approach at quarterback. They're not going to make it all about that guy. They're not going to, you know, let go of a guy that's, you know, top half of the league, top 20 quarterback in football just to go, oh, maybe we could strike it rich and get a guy that's in the top five. That's risky. It is. You got something kind of tried and true here in, in Detroit. Going in the right direction, I, I, I would agree with it. Don't disrupt it and just build around what you got right now. You got a little mojo going. It's all relative. Yeah. Jared Goff was never going to win a Super Bowl for the Rams. Well, the Lions would be thrilled to just be in the playoffs every year yeah. and to maybe yeah. get to a Super Bowl, and they'll worry about winning it if they get there, because maybe they'll have enough talent around Jared Goff that it doesn't right. have to be all about right. Jared Goff making or not making a big throw in a big spot. So they have a guy who's good enough to help them get to where they're currently trying to be. The The conversation is not yet relevant. Is he holding us back? He's not holding us back because we're not where we want to be. He's helping us get to where we want to be. Now, it's a cruel, objective, results-driven business. If there is a cap that develops on how far he can take them, and this is one of the negative realities of what they've done this year. 
the bar is higher next year. It's easy to emerge with a great season when no one expected anything out of you and you did start one and six yes, and then you right. turned it around. Right. You become everyone's darling and everyone thinks this is great. Well, there's going to be a hell of a lot of pressure on everyone next year. And, you know, your schedule, the routine of playing at 1 o'clock Eastern most Sundays, that's going to get disrupted because now you're going to get yanked to 425 and you're going to be more desired and they're going to want you on national platforms other than the one that you own the first of three Thanksgiving games. So, you know, once you prove you can get it done, people expect you to keep getting it done. And and so that that's that's part of this. And you know what? Flip it around, Chris. I'm looking at his contract. Twenty five point six five million is what he's due to make this year. At some point, it's not about do the Lions want to rip up this contract and move on from him? We've crossed that bridge. Now the question is, is Jared Goff being fairly paid considering what he's done and considering where the market is? I think at some point, Goff needs to be thinking about talking to the Lions about something that better reflects his value because 25.65 is beneath where he should be given what he's done. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. I guess, you know, I, we certainly could say he was overpaid for a few years for given what he was done as well. Uh, I understand. I mean, the the current market for where it's at, yeah, he's he is a little underpaid right now. But to your point, I mean, we were at week seven going, well, they're going to draft a quarterback here. You know, they're going to draft a quarterback. Right. It's, it's so, so that's where I don't think we can start to just go, well – He's definitely, well, let's sign him up long term. That, that's where there's a little bit of a balance, I think, to what you're talking about, too. Yes, he's turned the corner from, okay, wait, we need Sean McVay to devise game plans to help him out and make him look good. He's not that anymore. That's for sure. You know, th this experience in Detroit has definitely made him physically, mentally tougher. He pulls the trigger into tighter windows now. He's more aggressive that way, throwing the ball. They've given him a little more confidence, that's for sure. But I, I know for me personally, I'd like to see more before I said, hey, let's give him a new contract and throw out more money. To all the points you just talked about. You know, it's, it, there is, you know, when you're sneaking up on everybody and you're one and six and you're the Lions and like Aaron Rodgers said, you know, hey, we can't lose to that team this way. I mean, that's how you're looked at at the start of the streak to, to a degree. They became real at the end of the year, but expectations will be real next year. You're right about that. Let alone like what we talked about a minute ago, they're – I would think are going to be one of the major players in free agency. And then within the draft, that's only going to add to the expectations. So everyone's going to look at it and go, wait, top five offense. Oh, wow. When they now they put all these assets on defense. Well, the defense should be, you know, top 10, top 15. And that should mean we go to the playoffs. And it's a whole different ball game, as you're explaining, Mike. I think you're exactly right. It's different when you're the marked man as compared to you're sneaking up on people and you kind of been a, the laughing stock of football for the last 40 years. Well, they feel right now to me like the Browns after 2018. Mm. Browns didn't make it to the playoffs that year, but they they turned it around enough that that we started thinking – hey, they got something. Yeah, there. right. And 2019 was a major disappointment in part because they made Freddie Kitchens the head coach because Kitchens had done so well with Baker Mayfield. And then they didn't have the infrastructure in place to continue the development of Baker Mayfield. And that's a relevant question to the Lions because yeah. if they would lose Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, one of the five teams looking for head coaches. Now, the Broncos won't touch him because the Broncos aren't going with a guy who that's doesn't have again. head coaching experience right. after Nathaniel Hackett. But – the Texans, the Colts, there are teams that are considering Ben Johnson, and to the extent he gets the credit for getting the most out of Jared Goff, then they have to replace him, and that complicates things, and that that becomes you know, a, a good problem to have. I don't know. It's just a problem. I, yes, it's great that, that they've done so well that Ben Johnson is being considered to be a head coach elsewhere, but we didn't even make the playoffs, and we're going to lose our offensive coordinator. We're going to figure out who's going to continue this development of Jared Goff, so... It, it really has been remarkable. Even though Holmes said he never deemed Jared Goff to be a bridge quarterback, I think everybody did. And and Holmes probably deep down recognized that, well, I, we, we got to give this two years because of the contract, because of the guarantees they inherited. They had to give it two years. They had to keep him around for two years. They weren't going to turn around and unload him unless they were going to tie a first-round pick to it as well. 
So they made that commitment because they had nothing else to do as they laid the foundation for whatever they were going to be. And now the foundation is in place. Let's see where Jared Goff can take them. And you made the great point earlier this year about them playing outdoors in the cold. And early in the game on Sunday night, there was one of those old school Jared Goff country club throws and on the Peacock show post game. I actually watched it this week. I stayed up late. I was energized by the outcome. When sometimes you get energized by the outcome of a game and and you keep watching what's on. And I was watching the game on Peacock and I heard Rodney Harrison acknowledge yeah. during the post game show right. that he used to call Jared Goff Country Club. <laughs> right. And uh, he did. And the idea was anytime you take this guy out in the cold, he can't throw, he can't play. And we saw it. 2018, I think they went to Chicago late in the regular season. He fell apart yeah. when the Rams were having a great year. And it and there was one of those one of the but uh, no, wasn't an issue, non issue. Fighting because through he lives that. in Detroit. Even right. though they play indoors, they live in Detroit. He's out in the cold. They practice in the cold. He's getting used to it. He's like the kid that grew up in the cold. It's not an issue. He's becoming that kid that grew up in the cold, even if he didn't grow up in the cold. That's right. I think we should all make strides this year in that department. I mean, we can even go to the late part of the year, like in Carolina. It was in the high 20s. They lost the game in Carolina. He didn't, th- he didn't play that great in the game. The stats will sh- say, oh, he threw for 300 yards, but it was all late, meaningless kind of yards. It was one of those type of things. But I, I even was still a little worried about that, to your point, uh, last week in Green Bay. But for the most part, threw the ball you know, pretty well in the cold days. I think he has adjusted to that. I think he's adjusted to you know just being off the red carpet as far as, you know, not being the first pick of the franchise and, you know, the the coach making it all about him and them being so invested into, oh, we got to make him look good because he's the first pick, to now where, yeah, he's a part of the team, he's a part of the game plan, he's a good deep ball thrower, and, you know, he's he's tough, he's that too, and he's humble, he's not a guy that's, you know, looking to be me, 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 so there's a lot of positive things about Jared Goff as a quarterback. You know, but but the one thing I think that, you know, it's where is he? What is he? His stats are top 10, sure. I don't think anybody in their right mind is going to say he's a top 10 quarterback, right? I don't think that that's where we are. You know, I think the next thing is, do we think Jared Goff, can he be a guy that, you know, maybe can carry a team at certain moments and, and carry you through a, a fourth quarter when the team's not playing well and making plays? You know, I, I think that's the that's where he's on that fine line of guy that needs support system, you know, and and really needs that to be a successful quarterback. Or can he take that next little jump and start to be a guy that, oh, whoa, it's fourth quarter, Jared Goff, watch out for this. I don't think he's going to be that guy. I think he's got to be a guy that's got to have a team and a formula around him the right way here. And they certainly seem like they're set up to do that here for the next four or five years for sure. One amazing statistical development, nine straight games without an interception and set yeah. franchise records for the lowest interception rate, only 1.2%, and the highest touchdown to interception ratio of 4.14. And as we know, if you can really crank up that touchdown to interception ratio, you can maybe make some Aaron Rodgers style <laughs> arguments that you're one of the best quarterbacks in football. So keep it up, Jared Goff, but don't let that keep you from pulling the trigger if you're in a week 18 winning in game, not that I know Aaron Rodgers was pull, he was pulling the trigger on Sunday night. He was just pulling it all over the pulling place. Pulling bad but, triggers, right? Um, exactly right. We, we, yeah, we, we've, I don't know. It's, I guess it's better to not pull the trigger at all than if when you're going to pull the trigger, you're just going to be firing it up into, into the air for whoever may want to go catch it. And we saw that happen yeah, that's amazing. Uh, more than once that's on, amazing, right? on Sunday night. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.